Well, God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you one more time. Rev Eddie here. Hey, hold. Stop it. Somebody. Baba! Get him off that porch. What the heck is wrong with him? Baba! You see what we have to put up with there? Take that gun from him and sit your sorry self down in that table and open up that Bible. Why would you do that right when we're trying to start up a podcast? Do you see what we got to put up with, Pastor Tim? Amen, we do, Rip, but, you know, we got a lot of Bubba's and Bubbettes out in this world. Yeah, come on, Ladair. <laughs> Ladair know what we talking about. Rev Eddie here. There's our warriors for Christ, our sold-out warriors. For God I live, for God I'll die. Any more out there? Come on, let's get in this word. Hallelujah. We're going back into... Galatians chapter 4. We got through. We got busy yesterday, didn't we, Tim? Amen. We got through verse 7, so we'll be picking up at verse 8 today in our uh, lesson and uh, see how far we can go. This is awesome. And I want to bring to your attention that there were there are three distortions that we're dealing with in Christianity. Now, as in the book of Galatians that Paul is addressing, the Jude Judaized Christianity became a big problem. And in other churches that he planted, as well as Galatians, legalized, legalism, legalized Christianity. And then there's another one, y'all. We're going to discuss it today. Lawless. Oh, they... You act like I didn't say that. They got a lawless Christianity, and then we're going to compare it to true Christianity. Amen? So come on, come on, come on. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen? And uh, Pastor Tim wanted to say something to you before we get started. Y'all were so beautiful and kind to him yesterday in all the comments. Amen? Go ahead, Tim. Ah, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for the birthday wishes and everything. You know, a year older in body, but a year younger in spirit. Yeah. As he was reading them, I heard he started crying, but don't tell nobody. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for touching this pastor's heart. Amen. We just want to give a shout out to all of you that are following on Facebook, and YouTube. We thank God for all of you. We are family now, and we are in this to win this. Know it in your heart. We don't bend. We don't break. We don't shy away. We never quit. We don't compromise this word of God, not one iota. We don't compromise our walk with the Lord, period. Are you with me? But we will walk the walk that Christ asked us to walk. Surrender to the power of his Holy Spirit as he shapes us, forms us, molds us, and makes us into what he wants us to be. It's by his power that we get through this thing called life. Somebody need to shout. <laughs> Amen. But we thank God for all of you that are following. And uh, if you're on YouTube and you'd like to reach out to this ministry, maybe for personal prayer, you want to get something off your chest, you want to chat something out, it's okay. We are here for you just about 24 hours a day. You can find Pastor Tim, amen, because he's up all night long during those late midnight hours when things can get real tough, amen. Come over to Facebook, search Tim Heather, and message him. He'll get right back to you. If it's during the day you'd like to reach me, come over to Facebook, search Tim Rev. Eddie Wiggins. Now, on Facebook, Rev. Eddie is one word. No space, no dash. No dots, no periods. Just Rev. Eddie Wiggins. Message me. We'll exchange numbers. That way, we can 
talk it out, chat it out, cry it out, shout it out, pray it out, knowing all the while in our hearts that our almighty God, our all-knowing, all-seeing, all-loving, all-caring, all-powerful God is going to work it out. Come on, somebody. Amen. A shout out to our favorite island in the whole wide world, the island of Mindanao, over there in the Philippines, and all the beautiful people there, from Dipalog City to Dipaton City to Palanco to Barangay, Districts 1, 2, and 3, and all the way up into those mountains. We just thank God for all of you. Can't wait to be back in your arms once again, hopefully real soon here. Amen. And we just want to thank you for following us. This podcast brought to you on a live stream and a broadcast by the Mighty Kiss FM, Polanco 90.1 on your FM radio dial. And our favorite DJs in the whole wide world, DJ Joe Ryan and DJ Woody Boy, a.k.a. Dr. Love. And it's time. For the healing hour, Lord, keep your mighty hand of protection on them. Continue to use them for your glory. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's keep the mighty kiss FM Polanco lifted up in our prayers. Amen. I also want to give a shout out and let's keep praying for Pastor Neely and that powerful ministry the Lord has her doing from Dipalog City all the way up into those mountains. Glory be to God looking for the lost. And now it's a dynamic duo in that ministry with Pastor Mary Jane Polari by Pastor Neely's side. Let's keep them lifted up in our prayers. Amen. And we want to continue to pray for Charlotte and Dale on the beautiful continent of downtown Australia, just on fire for the Lord. I got to uh, see him on video yesterday and uh, chat with them a bit. Amen. And they may be here as soon as June, y'all. So let's see what God has planned. I can't wait to get Charlotte up here on a podcast. She's going to give her testimony. She's been to hell, too. Amen. So let's keep them lifted up in our prayers as well as Samanga and her ministry over in Zambia, Africa. Minister Deborah Atwell on that beautiful hot smoking island of Trinidad, Tobago, just on fire for the Lord. Let's continue to pray for Pastor Mugoda Stanley over in Uganda, Africa, and his ministry as well as our Texas crew, Nick and Patricia. And that powerful, powerful, powerful prison ministry they're doing, 10 prisons a week in Jesus' name. And their friends and ours, Pastor Mike and Pastor Joel, at that wonderful Victory Outreach Ministry in beautiful downtown Fort Worth, Texas. Come on, somebody. And, you know, they, 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 Pastor Mike knows how to cook, Tim. And then uh, Pastor Joel put a picture up. And, uh, you know, they sell dinners. They were doing it when we were there. Uh, they were doing tri-tip when I was there, but they got some ribs, and I don't know what <laughs> what else they got on that grill. I couldn't identify it, but I'm telling you, it looked finger-looking good. So I hit up Pastor Mike this morning. He sent back a, a LOL. I told him, man, that looked good. You're going to make somebody hop on a bus? from California (laughs) to eat. Amen. But let's keep uh, them up in our prayers as well as Pastor Joel and his wife's six-day-a-week prison ministry. Amen. A shout-out, and let's keep praying for Sam Knight. Praise God. Hallelujah. And let's keep praying for our spiritual mentors, our coaches, and teachers. Amen. Coach Randy Lowe, his lovely wife, and ministry, family, relatives, and loved ones, and Coach Gecker. Hey, Coach G, I see you back there behind the light. Amen. And his lovely wife, Kay, their ministry, and all his family, relatives, and lo- loved ones, and her show. Yeah. Yep, yeah, I've been over to Coach Gecker's page. He posted something beautiful. Amen. Six hours ago. Let's Let's glean from it. He, I'm telling you, they can't stop teaching. <laughs> Amen. But they teach the folks Amen. how to get to heaven now. And it really goes with where we're at and what we've been ministering. 
It's got to be by the Holy Spirit's power, y'all. Amen. So watch this. He says, I am so encouraged by the reminder of the Holy Spirit's enabling power in Acts 1 and 8 when the disciples were just starting out in ministry. But you will receive power, the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the world. All you have to do is ask and pray for the Holy Spirit to work in your heart and mind, and it will happen. That power of the Holy Spirit is what is needed to go, make disciples, be a faithful witness in Dallas, in Texas, in the U.S., into all the world. That's our identity, a child of God called and empowered by the Holy Spirit to go in his power, not your own glory. Thank you, Coach G. Amen. Praise God for that. Let's continue to pray for Anthony and Jamal on the beautiful downtown streets of Atlanta, Georgia. Our brother in Christ, Rod. My sisters, Karen and Jan. My auntie, Annette. My nephew, Michael and niece, Elena. Let's keep Sarah and Captain Haynes and their powerful ministries lifted up in our prayers. And we're praying for Sarah, totally healed, delivered, and set free from the top of her head to the soles of her feet in every area of her body in Jesus. Precious and mighty name, thank you, Lord. Let's continue to pray for Dorothy and her dad and son, Lee. Pastor Jody and her powerful ministry, Gail and Tech. And that beautiful grandson of theirs, Mateo, totally healed, delivered, and restored in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And Jay's following, y'all. Let's give Jay a shout out. Hey, Jay. We won't stop praying for you, Jay. Let's keep Cheyenne and her children lifted up in our prayers, Miss Elena Gore and Miss Ladera Turner. Oh, yeah, kids can't wait. They got 82 degrees up here today, Miss Ladera. So they think we we about ready to hop on the bus, scoot down to Southern California, and come get them some peach cobbler. That's what they want. Yeah, they've been playing outside all morning. Now they're ready for Bible study. We thank God for you, Ladera, and your entire family and all that God is doing in your family. We thank you for being the best part of us. We thank God for you. We thank you, Jesus, for your mighty hand of protection upon Ladera and her entire family, especially her sister and miracle granddaughter. Lord, have your way. Let only your mighty and perfect will be done in their hearts, minds, souls, and lives in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep evangelist Tammy and her powerful ministry and daughter lifted up in our prayers. I'm telling (laughs) y'all, this is a serious thing today. We got to keep our kids lifted up in our prayers. Amen. Especially, we thank you, Jesus, for Ashley and her daughter. Oh, protect them like only you can, Lord, and touch every heart in her family, that they too would fall in love with you and serve you for the rest of their days. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's keep Lucia and Sasha lifted up in our prayers. And we want to continue to pray for Lucia's sister, Martina, and her brother, John. Let's pray for April and all of her children, whom are Bradley, Emma, Kyle, and Gracie, her very talented and skilled husband, John, her nana, Sandy, healed from head to toe in Jesus' name, her aunt, Sandy, for salvation, healing, and deliverance in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And April's prayer is that all her children and family will fall madly in love with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we touch and agree right now. It is done in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's give a shout out and keep praying for Jesse and his entire family. Oh, he sent pictures this morning. He cooked the kids up something special. Oh, they grubbed. They loved it. Thank you, Jesse. And we want to continue to pray for Jesse's uncle, and mom, all his family, especially his uncle and mom, that they too would come into the true knowledge of Jesus Christ. 
get into this word, fall in love with Jesus and serve him the rest of their days in Jesus. Precious and mighty name, let's keep our truth warrior, Lene, and her ministry lifted up in our prayers along with all her children, her mom, Linda, her dad, all her family, relatives, and loved ones, her home, her business, and her finances. Lord, pour out a blessing that will knock her socks off in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And now our Ms. Turner, our Ms. QS, our quiet storm. <laughs> Hallelujah. We just thank you, Jesus, for sharing her and her ministry with us, colliding our ministries all these years. We thank you, Lord. And we ask that you would continue to heal Audrina and her dad from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet and every area of their bodies continue to use her for your glory in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And let's keep Miss Turner's cousin Wanda lifted up in our prayers. God is doing a mighty thing in Wanda's heart, soul, mind, body. I mean, she's on fire for the Lord. And I want to thank each and every one of you for praying. Miss Turner can see the difference. Amen. Wanda can see the distance. Lord, just continue working through Wanda. Use her for your glory. Touch every heart in her family. Uh, mend every heart in her family at the loss of Wanda's son toward the end of last year. Let's continue to pray for my boy, Brian. Pray hard, y'all. And John Fowler, my uh, childhood friend, along with E.S. from YouTube. How are you doing, E.S.? And Scott Woodall. I think he's a busy bear, Tim. <laughs> Amen. I got to get him back on the phone. We ain't chatted in a minute. But we thank you, Jesus, for Scott <coughs> and all you're doing in his life and each and every one of his family members, Lord, especially his sister and his wife. Oh, you move mightily, Lord. In their lives, continue your mighty work of salvation, healing, and deliverance. Make them exactly like you created them to be, Lord. And keep your mighty hand upon Ray and Barney and all the others that Scott is ministering to. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's continue to pray and send some love to God's thunder twin. Amen. Yeah. The sun continues to shine on God's thunder twin. Amen. And Amen. we thank you, Jesus, for healing them, whole and complete, from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, in every area of their bodies, in Jesus' precious and mighty name, your deliverance power in every area of their lives, your healing power for their friend, uh, Kathy and her hip, and your healing, deliverance, and restoration for their nephew, uh, seven-year-old Jamie. Thank you, Lord. And let's keep Pastor Tim. I said our birthday boy. <laughs> Lift it up in your prayers. Amen. Traveling grace wherever he goes. His beautiful wife, Heather, just on fire for the Lord now. And... His beautiful daughters, Jaden and Haley, got to keep these kids lifted up in our prayers. Along with Christina with a K down in beautiful downtown Arkansas. Christ in her heart and Christ in her name. Her son. We got to keep these kids lifted up, y'all. Amen. Her grandmother, all her family, relatives, and loved ones, and every beautiful thing God has put on her heart to do for God's kingdom. Let's pray for those down under on the beautiful continent of Australia, Paris, and Julie, and Margaret, and uh, Tyla, and Wang Guien from Melbourne, Australia, Angelica Lewis, Zarlia, Martin and Paris, Julie and John, Joshua, Jordan, and Mariano. Let's continue to pray for Laura from YouTube, and her daughter, Micah. Micah, you are coming out better than you went in, girl, in Jesus' Precious and mighty name, you're coming out with a Christ-like mind, a sound mind filled with love and power in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep Gene from YouTube lifted up in our prayers, and Robert Minnick, Ikina from Houston, Texas, and Ken and Cindy. I got to talk with Ken this morning. We just thank 
Thank you, Ken and Cindy, for all you're doing in and throughout this ministry. We thank you, Jesus, for Ken, and all you're sharing with him, all you're doing for him, all you're doing for his wife, Cindy, all you're doing for their marriage, their children, all their family, relatives, and loved ones, their home, as well as their places of employment and their uh, finances. Lord, pour them out a blessing in their finances that will knock their socks off in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Carly from YouTube as well as Pick a Moon from India, a great high-paying job and a beautiful, gorgeous, magnificent Christian husband from her tribe in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's lift up Marvin Cage, Helen Geddes, Leah Henderson, and her entire family, Charlie, and we thank you, Jesus, for your mighty hand of protection upon Kelly and her five-year-old son. Heal their hearts like only you can in Jesus' name. No more abuse in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And now our beloved Anna from Alabama. Amen. I got to chat with her this morning, Tim. I got to get back to her. I had a very important call I was waiting for her to come in. So she's taking a nap. <laughs> Amen. But we thank you, Jesus, for Anna and her husband, Terry, and all that you're doing in this family. Your mighty hand of protection over this family. Heal Anna and her husband, whole and complete, from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet in every area of their bodies, Lord. Have your way in their lives healing and deliverance and restoration in Jesus' name. Watch over their daughter, Valerie, and those precious children that you've given Valerie, Odie, and Atlas. Praise God. We just thank you for them, and thank you for bringing them into our lives, Lord. And keep your mighty hand upon Anna's son-in-law. Salvation, healing, and deliverance. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's continue to pray for peace and healing in Christ-like minds. For Raven, Shiloh, and Harley, let's pray for Lakeisha and her ministry, son and family, my spiritually adopted family, Michelle, my girl Angelina, Gilbert, and Mia. Lord, have your way in each and every one of their hearts, minds, souls, and spirits. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Prophetess Minister Laura Solis and her family and ministry, peace and forgiveness throughout her ministry and family. And let's continue to pray for her son, George, her daughter, Adrena, and her cousin, Violet. Let's not forget John Garcia from YouTube, totally delivered from drugs in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep, let's keep Gloria S. from YouTube. Lifted up in our prayers with all of her children. She needs a miracle, a dentist for her teeth. She's praying for wisdom and knowledge from God and that he would order each and every one of her stop, step, each and every one of her steps. Amen. We're praying for her daughter, Brooke, and her son, Dean. They both need deliverance from uh, marijuana as well as Brooke, her daughter, needs to be delivered, Lord, from uh, bipolar. Uh, their dog needs a miracle in his hip, Lord. And her brother Vincent, in and out of those uh, VA hospitals, suffering from mental illness. Give him a Christ-like mind, a sound mind filled with love and power. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, and deliver Dean, her son, from gambling. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, thank you, Lord. Let's continue to pray for Hermon from Stockholm, Sweden. Lord, he's looking for a spirit-filled church. Lead him to the one of your choice that he may fall into your arms. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Ashley and Jet and our beloved... <laughs> you... These kids going crazy, Tim. They don't even know who I'm getting ready to pray for, and they're already screaming. I was about to say, <laughs> okay, <laughs> our beloved Jahan from England, we thank God for you. They saw her online eating some chocolate. They can't wait to get in 
<laughs> get inside her, get her, get her in their sights. Amen. They they're gonna be patting pockets and looking through purses and everything else, trying to find that chocolate. We thank God for you, girl, and all that the Lord is doing in your life. We thank God that He brought you here with us. Amen. And what a blessing you are to all of us and to me. I thank God for you. And we're praying for healing for your entire family, especially you and your mom. From the top of your heads to the soles of your feet and every area of your bodies and a miracle in those glands in your eyelids that they will release all their precious oils to keep your eyes moistened in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And we thank you, Lord, for protecting protecting Jehan in all she does, everywhere she goes, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's pray for Tina McCoy from Powell, Wyoming, and Clara from YouTube, her sons Daniel and Gino, delivered from tobacco, in Jesus' name. Tim's sister Amanda, a miracle in her tummy, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep praying for Alonzo Holloway and Mr. Reddick, God's mighty hand of favor upon them and their court dates that they will be released and be able to return to society and be the warriors that Christ created them to be. Let's continue to pray for Fred Tiffany, the man that will be saved, and Derek and his entire family. We thank God for you, Derek, and all you're doing in and throughout this ministry. We thank God for all the Lord has put in you. You are that warrior. We thank God for you. And we want to continue to pray for your family, especially your mother and brother, that they too will come into the true knowledge of Jesus Christ, fall in love with him, serve him for the rest of their days in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Boyd Lamar from YouTube. Amen. His own place, a nice place, a safe place, a great high-paying job and healing in his heart. Let's lift up Krissa and her husband and all her family, relatives, and loved ones over in Kenya, Africa, especially her brother, Benedict, uh, for salvation, healing, and deliverance from drugs, alcohol, and lifestyles. Not pleasing to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that he, too, will fall in love with our Lord and serve him for the rest of his days, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Thank you, Lord, for your mighty hand of protection upon Angelo Highsmith. Let's continue to pray for Al Bato, James Mayer, and Cody, all delivered from drugs and any spirit, not of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's keep praying for Mario and his salvation, and we're praying against the spirit of anger and rage. Throughout this ministry, each and every one of our homes, our family, relatives, loved ones, and places of employment. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, a shout out to Auntie Helen. Let's keep Michelle Vanall and all her ministries lifted up in our prayers. And our beloved Ronnie. Oh, we just thank God for you, Ronnie, and all you're doing in and throughout this ministry. Thank you, Jesus, for your mighty healing power upon Ronnie and her daughter Viviana. Totally healed from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet in every area of their bodies. Thank you, Jesus. Keep your mighty hand upon her Large family, Lord, watch over each and every one of them, especially in some of their workplaces. They work in some pretty precarious places, Lord. Keep them safe. Every day they come home safe. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, a shout-out to Clarissa over in Austin, Texas. Let's keep praying for Tangra from Houston, Texas, as well as Chris from Wyoming for deliverance and healing. And Pastor Larry and his ministry over in Dipalog City. His beautiful family, his lovely wife, his wonderful daughters, Jaira, Micah, Angelica. Angelica healed in her heart right now in Jesus' name. Micah enrolled in school, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, pour him out a blessing that all their needs would be met with an abundance left over to do your work. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, we declare that the Spirit of God 
that you have freely given the Christian staff, inmates, and volunteers of Solano Prison and every prison causes them not to walk in a spirit of fear or timidity, but instead they walk in power, love, and a sound mind. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that because of your presence in them every place that the soles of their feet shall step becomes consecrated ground, holy ground, and belongs to them. Your presence, Almighty God, has caused them to become a great and generous blessing to everyone that enters these prison walls. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for demonstrating your amazing love towards them every day. We choose to walk in the example of love that Hosea showed towards Gomer even in her unfaithfulness to him. We choose to move in an abundance of love. Showing respect for all, even when we are faced with pain and unfaithfulness. We follow your example, almighty God, and walk in your way of love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for continually breaking off every chain off of every heart and setting each and every one of these captives free. Receive the prayers of incense rising up day and night from the men, staff, and volunteers on these prison grounds. Receive them on behalf of every family, person, and place represented. We declare and thank you, Lord Jesus, that your joy, health, freedom, rest, protection, and the peace of God rule in the hearts of every person. God, you are always good. And the church said together, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Who's Ready for a word. Come on, grab your Bibles. Galatians chapter 4. Amen. And we left off at verse 7 yesterday. I'm going to back up to verse 4, bring us right into our lesson t today, starting at verse 8. You ready, Tim? <coughs> we, oh, there he is. I had to check the phone, make sure we hadn't lost him. He's out there. Whipping them eight, 18 wheels across somebody's state. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come Amen. into your mic a little bit. How's that? Little better. Can you get in there more? <laughs> uh, I don't think I can. I get uh, maybe like that. <laughs> yeah, not bad. I'm praying that uh, Miss Turner won't want to whack my hand with a ruler because they couldn't hear you. <laughs> Amen. I hear you. So we'll go back to verse 4 from yesterday just to remind us where we're at and flow right into today's lesson. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom, y'all. Freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent his spirit. I'm sorry, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you. That's right, you, each and every one of you, his heir. Bef Amen. Today's lesson, verse 8. Before you Gentiles knew God, you were slaves to so-called small g God that do not even exist. Are you with me? That are weak and useless. <laughs> I mean, you got a pencil in your praising it, calling it a God. You got something that was carved out of wood or stone, looked like a little lizard, right? And you're calling that a God. They're useless. They're weak. They can't speak. They can't move. They can't do anything, okay? But that's where these Gentiles were before they found Christ that Paul's addressing. And some of us have had false gods. I have one. Her name was Cocaine. Amen. I thank God. I thank God. In 19 years, I'm telling you, deliverance is powerful, y'all. Lord, touch Amen, me. Really? I never went back. No weed, no cocaine, no nothing. 
No more drug. My drug life ended in my walk. And my life with the Lord began. There's freedom in Christ. That's what we really want to glean from the book of Galatians, the freedom to just love on him, be in relationship with him, one with his spirit, one with this word, one with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who makes us right in God's sight because of our faith in him. That freedom, you know. Amen. So watch this now. Uh, I want to see. I didn't get an asterisk there. Amen. But let's read that again. Verse 8. Before you Gentiles knew God, you were slave to so-called gods that you that do not even exist. So now that you know God, or should I say, now that God knows you, why? Do you want to go back again and become slaves once more to the weak and useless spiritual principles of this world? Those weak, useless spiritual principles are being enslaved again in sin, worshiping false God, or this Judaism, <laughs> a Gentile has to become a Jew get circumcised, and come under the law of Moses in order to be saved. Wrong. Wrong. And wrong again. Verse 10 says, you are trying to earn favor with God by observing certain days or months or seasons or years you see, that's bondage too, y'all. They had many holidays, celebrations, Day of Atonement and Passover and, you know, Feast of Unleavened Bread and all these other holidays. It ain't about that no more. We got Jesus and there's freedom in Jesus. All this yeah. other stuff out the window, baby. The diet, gone. Amen? <laughs> Were in certain things on certain days gone. Leave that behind. Just grab a hold of Jesus. There's a beautiful song out there. Grab the hem of his garment. <laughs> and don't let go. <laughs> the woman let go when she got that healing. I'm telling y'all to get through this tribulation these last days. Let's grab a hold of Jesus and just don't let go. Amen. <laughs> He's strong Amen. enough to carry us all. If, uh, if he carried that cross with all our sins on it, okay, if he carried the weight of all the world's sin on that cross, he can surely carry us to the end to where we will see him coming on the clouds, y'all. Amen? <laughs> That's freedom. Amen? So watch this. He says, you're trying to earn favor with God by observing certain days or months or seasons or years. I fear for you. <laughs> Verse 11 says, I fear for you. Perhaps all my hard work with you was for nothing. Dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to live as I do in freedom from these things for I have become like you Gentiles free from those laws oh you ain't kidding hey, hey, can I make an example oh come that? on in Tim <laughs> there's a place that I go to okay and it's owned that I deliver meat to okay and it is uh, owned by or they, they, it's owned by uh, some Jewish folks yeah and every time I come in before they can even unload that trailer, yeah. they have to bring a rabbi, rabbi in to bless that meat in there. Oh, wow. Yes. Kosher. I didn't believe it at first. He got to make it yes. kosher. <laughs> yes, I did not believe it until I actually saw that rabbi walk past me and go up to the trailer, and they opened the doors for him, and they he blessed the food in there. See, when I was on the island, I had a Jewish friend. 
And he showed me where a market was where we could buy American goods. See, in the Caribbean, it's mostly fed by Europe, okay? And I'm telling you, they got some bomb butter in Europe. It don't taste nothing like ours. The ice cream is off the chain, okay, from Europe. Totally different, their dairy. And their meats are different, amen? But there were things I was after, amen? Well, well, I, well I, amen, and it, but it gets better, Rev. Huh. So I was waiting there for them to unload my trailer and everything. Now, knowing me, I had a ham sandwich with me that I was fixing to eat. <laughs> he came by and he asked me, would you like me to bless that for you? Um, I just asked my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I gave thanks to yes. him for, for my food. And he looked like I shot him. Wow. You know? Yeah. And was just like, he just kind of put his hands up and just walked away. Yeah. I'm like, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the uh, for the offer, though. <laughs> yes. I was just like, wow. We're free you know? now, y'all. We say grace. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, so much for this food. May it strengthen my body to do your service in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And that food is clean, y'all. Even if they tried to poison you, the poison's gone. It's safe. Even if who prepared it might have a cold. It's safe, y'all. Mm -hmm. That's why we ask the Lord to bless. Well, we're free to do that. We don't need a ceremony. We don't need a ritual. We don't need a rabbi. My friend on the island had bought a bottle of wine that was kosher. So he told me that a rabbi had prayed for it, but he wanted to stop by the rabbi's house that he knew on the island to have it blessed for Sabbath. Well, exactly. Their and Sabbath dinner. What, and we did that, right? y'all. And I'm looking but at him just... like, wow. Look at all the bondage. Look at all well, that you go through. And well, this is supposed they... to please God? Yeah, well, I mean, you're exactly right, Rev. I mean, they literally had to wait for that rabbi to show up, and they had to shut down. The oh, he wasn't he on site. No, they had to They call him up. Say, hey, this trailer is coming in, you know, <laughs> and they were breathing down my neck to get it there, so I got it there early, Then they had to call the rabbi up, mm -hmm. and while I'm sitting there, these workers are sitting around twiddling their thumbs, they literally shut down production until he got there. Wow. Do you see the bondage, Joe? Mm -hmm. And this is what Paul is trying to take him from and into the freedom in Christ. Free. Oh, thank God I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me. It's a great song. <laughs> if it ain't, it but ought to be. But, but I mean, I told him, I said, look, I'm just going to drop the trailer next time and grab an empty. I can't wait around right. six hours for the rabbi to show up. To it took six hours the for the rabbi to get there? Yes. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. Now, now that's yeah. bondage, y'all. Everything stopped. You're no longer free to move. You're no longer free to work. You're no longer free to get at, you know, your next pickup or anything. It's like you're in chains waiting yep. for what? A man. Exactly. A man to do what? <laughs> what? What is he going to do to change the... Con the consumption of that food. He didn't make it. It wasn't made in a kosher kitchen. Uh -uh. He don't know the ingredient. He don't know the secret sauces. He don't know the uh -uh. secret spices. He don't know the filthy hands that was all over that. That's why we rinse our stuff from the market, right? Amen. What is a man's blessing going to do compared to what Jesus will do for our food? Well, when you figure that one out, Rev, you let me know. <laughs> There's freedom in Christ, y'all. Amen. Amen. Watch Amen. this now. Okay. Uh, so he said in verse 11, I fear for you. Perhaps all my hard work for you was nothing. Verse 12. Dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to live as I do in freedom from these things 
for I have become like you Gentiles, free from those laws. Now this is interesting what's coming up next. You did not mistreat me when I first preached to you. So they got the true gospel. He'd been there before. Mm -hmm. And now he done heard they done went off the rails like his church in Corinth. And his heart is heavy. It's broken. These are like his children. He's their spiritual father. And it's like, wow, I turned my back. And y'all done tow the room up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Amen. But he says, you did not mistreat me when I first preached to you. Surely you remember that I was sick when I first brought you the good news. See, they'd received the good news, and he was ill when he arrived. The boy had been running all over the continent looking for folks to save for the Lord. You feel me? Going through jails and trials and everything else. Amen? So Amen. he was sick. But he brought that good news. Verse 14 says, But even though my condition tempted you to reject me, you did not despise me or turn me away. No, you took me in and cared for me as though I was an angel from God or even Christ Jesus himself. Where is that joyful and grateful spirit you felt then. Mm. You've changed, children. You're not where you were. But I, I know it ain't on me because I preached the good news. What happened? <laughs> Remember back in uh, chapter, uh, where was that? The beginning of chapter uh, three. Oh, foolish Galatians. Who is casting an evil spirit on you, an evil spell on you? What happened here? It wasn't like this well, when and, I left. And, and, and you know, and, and maybe I'm wrong in when I say this, but when these Pharisees found out that the Christian faith was spreading and they were losing money and followers in their religion, oh. that they didn't, that they may not have sent. You know, like an undercover, you know, uh, my, one of my favorite movies, Undercover Brother, but like oh, that, yeah. you know, into these churches. Yeah. Pharisees that may not be like, man, look, we need to make some money. Let's yeah. do this. And we don't have to preach that word. Yeah. We just got to give them inspirational speech, like some places we know they hear today. Right. You know, now how do we know that that didn't happen? It did. And we're about to get into that scripture. Ooh, praise God. And now think about this. There's millions of Jews, yes, but a lot of them have flipped and gone to Christianity. And Gentiles are coming in by the thousands into the churches. Amen? They're looking at it like, if we could get all of these Gentiles, turn them into Jews, bring them into the temple, rake their pocket, <laughs> empty their vaults and their bank account. Look how much more we'd have. We can play off this Christianity thing. Amen. All we got to do is turn them into Jews and tell them they can't be saved unless they become Jewish. Now, we go, they going to pay to get their wee-wees waxed. <laughs> We got money there. They can't come under the law of Moses without coming into the temple so we can pray for them. They're going to pay for that. And they're going to pay the temple tax just to get in. And they're going to have to offer a sacrifice so they're going to have to buy one of our raggedy lambs. <laughs> Some old <laughs> one-legged pigeons, you know. See? Well, yeah, because they don't know the word. They don't know back then it had to be unblemished, even if they did become Jews. Right. You know? So they're trying to make up for what they lost. You have to understand something. During Jesus' ministry, thousands of people followed him, listening to those words coming off his lips, those life-saving, life-changing, life-rearranging words. They're sitting up there at the temple talking about, hey, Fred, huh? What's up, Barney? 
where everybody at? I ain't heard a clink in the temple tax box all morning. Oh, they all out following Jesus. Where he at? I don't know. <laughs> but last time I saw him, thousands of people were following him. Amen. They hated him. They were so jealous of him. They're following him and not following them. And that jealousy turned into a hatred and a rage. Amen? They were greedy. Amen. Their hearts weren't right with God. That temple had nothing to do with God, as beautiful as it was. But if somebody truly wanted to come to Jerusalem and worship the one true living God, what they would have to go to just to get inside the temple, they wasn't in no spirit of worship no more. They dragging behind them an animal that can't walk, looking for an altar that they got to take it to to have it sacrificed. They've been raped of all of their money, paying the temple tax and the money changers because their money wasn't no good from their country because it has to be temple coins now. And the exchange rate was horrendous. Jesus saw that. That's why he threw them out of there twice. Are you with me? If they had a temple today, they'd still be doing it. Why do you, why do you think God let, a, let it be destroyed? That was supposed to be his place, his house on earth, where they could come visit him. They wasn't thinking about him. Okay? Uh -uh. They wasn't then, and they're, they're truly not today. Amen? So watch this. Uh, uh, back here in... Uh, Let's see, verse 15. Where is that joyful and grateful spirit you felt then? I am sure you would have taken out your own eyes and given them to me if it had been possible. Some theologians believe that his eyes were going bad. Maybe he had an eye infection when he came. He doesn't say, we're not going there. Amen. We're not going to speculate on what sickness. Think about today. What's knocking folks down now? A flu? A virus? You know? Bad uh -huh. cold? You see what I'm saying? Could have been off right as that boy was running for the law. We have no idea. So why even go there? Amen. But we know he wasn't top flight. He wasn't feeling good. He came in ill and they embraced him. And as he gave them the good news, sick as he was, they embraced him anymore. And they had, they had joy and a grateful spirit. A joyful spirit. What happened to that? That's what I be talking about, Tim. I'm going to churches to give my testimony, walk in, take a gaze at the people. They all frowning. Where am I at? <laughs> Y'all do know you on your way to heaven, right? What you frowning for? <laughs> ain't no joy ain't no love ain't no nothing it's like you were dragged in after a terrible accident what's wrong with you people amen and so verse 16 says have I now become your enemy because I'm telling you the truth let's go to this study God on what we've read so far amen amen and Paul's illness was a sickness that he was enduring when he visited the Galatian churches. The world is often callous to people's pain and misery. Paul commended the Galatians for not scorning him, even though his condition was a trial to them. He didn't explain what was wrong with him. Such caring was what Jesus meant when he called us to serve the homeless the hungry, the sick, and imprisoned, as if they were Jesus himself. You'll find that in Matthew 25, 34 through 20. I mean, 34 through 40. Do you avoid those in pain or those facing difficulty? Or are you willing to care for them as if they were Christ Jesus himself? I got another study guide here. Have you lost your joy? <laughs> Paul sensed 
that the Galatians had lost the joy of their salvation because of legalism. Legalism can take away joy because, number one, it makes people feel guilty rather than loved. Number two, it produces self-hatred rather than humility. Number three, it stresses performance over relationship. Number four, it points out how far short we fail or fall rather than how far we've come because of what Christ did for us. If you feel guilty and inadequate, check your focus. Are you living by faith in Christ or by trying to live up to the demands and expectations of others? And we will find that in some religion. They are real strict and real this, and they got real laws and regulations and bylaws that you must live by or we will put you out of our church. <laughs> Amen? There's a Freedom in Christ. Yes, our lives are a mess, but our faith is in Christ and the power he possesses over our lives as we surrender our lives to him, the power in his Holy Spirit that he would shape us and form us and mold us and make us into what he wants us to be. Turn our circumstances around, our situations around to where we will be free. That's the freedom in Christ. He'll fix it. Surrender to him. He'll fix the family. He'll fix the employment. He'll fix the house. Are you with me? Amen. You see, we all know we fall short. So why should we focus on all that we can't do when there's so much to focus on what Christ has already brought us through, already brought into our lives. Are you with me? Amen. That's the difference. And a lot of religions are legalistic. And there's no freedom to just come to the Lord and embrace him and love on him. Get into that close and intimate loving relationship with him. You feel me? I got another one here. Paul did not gain great popularity when he rebuked the Galatians for turning away from their first faith in Christ. Human nature hasn't changed much. We still get angry when we're scolded. <laughs> Amen? Amen. But don't write off someone who challenges you. There might be truth in what he or she says. Receive his or her words with humility. Carefully think them over. If you discover that you need to change an attitude or action, take steps to do it. How else can iron sharpen iron in the body of Christ? You see what I'm saying? If everyone feels like they're already there, See, this is a striving that we do with the Lord. We fight the good fight. We run the good race. Amen? We strive for perfection in our lives and our walk with the Lord. But it's him and his power, like Coach Gecker shared with us. It's his power. By his power, not human effort, that we become powerful, powerful weapons in his hands to bring him glory for the salvation of souls, the building of his kingdom, the breaking of the yokes, tearing down of strongholds, ripping off the chains off of God's people. He does all this through us. Our job is to surrender every area of our lives to him and watch him work. And it's a process. Get used to it. It ain't going to all happen overnight. So you microwave, Christian, back up, back off. Because the water ain't even hot on the stove in your spiritual walk. And you all sitting down at the table with knives and forks banging on the table. Feed me. 
the goodness ain't in the pot yet because the water ain't got hot yet. Let the Lord do what he's going to do in his timing. He'll shape you, form you, mold you, make you. Deliverance is a process, y'all. I want it so badly when I got out of hell. Every evil thing out of me now, Lord. I don't want it. You don't like it. Take it now. <laughs> I used to fuss with Pastor Herbert and Prophet Ben. He won't take it. I want it gone. <laughs> you just stay in that word, boy. Keep reading that word. Matter of fact, you're going to bring a word this Sunday. You're going to preach this Sunday. Bring me something that will tickle my spirit. Get your mind off of you is what Pastor Hubbard was doing to get my mind off of me and my failures where I'm not and put it on to the work that God had called me to do. You see? Amen. You won't even know when he takes it away. You'll just realize it's gone and you ain't doing it no more. And it's like, oh, when did you do that, Lord? Thank you, Jesus. And you keep going. You start focusing on others, helping them in their situations, doing what you can. Meanwhile, God's working yours out. That's the power of this prayer list that we pray every single day. As you're praying for others, God's working miracles in their lives and yours. <laughs> you feel me? The beautiful thing he started here. Okay, we're done with the study guide here now. Here's the issue. <laughs> Here it comes in Scripture, verse 17. Those false teachers. There you go, Tim. Uh-huh. Church folk. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> At least they call themselves church folk. Those false teachers are so eager to win your favor, but their intentions are not good. They're trying to shut you off from me so that you will pay attention only to them. If someone is eager to do good things for you, that's all right. But let them do it all the time, not just when I'm with you. Oh, dear, my dear children, I feel as if I'm going through labor pains for you again. And they will continue until Christ is fully developed in your lives. Y'all still babies. But you're supposed to be Holy Spirit-filled warriors for Jesus, is what Paul's saying. You're going to send me back to the beginning? I, what, what, I got to come back and give you the good news again? Is it that distorted in your mind because of their false teachings? This legalism that has crept in? Is a freedom in Christ. You're back in bondage again? Come on. And it's breaking his heart, y'all. Listen to him. Oh, my dear children, this is verse 19. I feel as if I'm going through labor pains for you again, and they will continue until Christ is fully developed in your life. I wish I was with you right now so I could change my tone, but at this distance, I don't know how else to help you. Wow. Let's go to the study guide on that before we turn the page. The false Amen. teachers claimed to be religious authorities and experts <laughs> in Judaism and Christianity, appealing to the believer's desire to do what was right. See, that's what the church wanted. The Gentiles, the Jews that had found that freedom in Christ, all they want to do is what's right for God. They're sold out now. But these false teachers have come in, played on that, telling everybody, I'm an expert. I know it all. You might as well say, I came from heaven. And I'm telling y'all, you ain't doing enough. You got to become Jewish before you can be saved, Mr. Gentile. And you Jews up in here thinking you all free in Christ? No. You got to come back under the bondage of the law of Moses. 
Are you with me? False teachers, false preachers, hypocrites, liars. Not one of them that are pushing this agenda could walk the walk themselves. That's why Christ came. But they're leading them back into bondage, into nonsense, into a spiritual thing. How did he word that? He said, you, he's gonna, you're going to become slaves once more to the weak and useless spiritual principles of this world. Why would you do that when you tasted and seen the freedom in Christ? You're going to go back into bondage. Really? Let's go to the study guide on, uh, finish the study guide on this. The false teachers claim to be religious authorities and experts in Judaism and Christianity, appealing to the believer's desire to do what was right they drew quite a following. Paul said, however, that they were wrong and that their motives were selfish. False teachers are often respectable and persuasive. That is why all teaching should be checked by the Bible. What do we always say every podcast, Pastor Tim? Read your word, read your word, read your word. Read your word. Don't take our word for it either. We're reading the word, but read your word. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you. He may give you something we missed. Share it in the comments. We want to grow too. Iron sharpens iron, baby. Come on. Amen. Amen. I got one more study guide. Paul led many people to Christ and then helped them mature spiritually. Perhaps one reason for his success as a spiritual father, was the deep concern he felt for his spiritual children. He compared his pain over their faithlessness to the pain of childbirth. We should have the same intense care for those to whom we are spiritual parents. When you lead people to Christ, remember to stand by them and help them grow. Amen. And let's see how we're doing on time. We're not doing bad. I want to share the, the, the three distortions of Christianity. And if we don't get through chapter four, uh, we'll finish it tomorrow. Amen. But Amen. it's important that we can see the difference, that we can know what's out there. And many religions today are still in this. Amen? And then <clears throat> Paul's going to give an allegory. And we'll get into that if we can. Uh, if we don't have time today, we'll get into it tomorrow. And then we go to my favorite. Oh, you act like it's not my favorite. Why are you looking at me like that? It's my favorite. <laughs> Chapter 5. I've been racing to get there, but we ain't racing through this word. So it's like we want every sentence, every verse to be a blessing to us as we study the word. So regardless about my rush in my heart to get to chapter 5, we're going to glean every word of this glorious book of Galatians to make sure that we're walking this, living this, as we go into these last days, this tribulation is upon us, y'all. Amen, bro. And we want, I want, Tim wants, we all want to make it through this tribulation. Jesus said, those that endure to the end, they will be saved. We're making warriors in this ministry, not wimps. Not those are just going to say, I'm too tired to go on. I'm going to just take the mark of the beast, worship, worship that statue, and God will have to forgive me. There is no forgiveness, y'all. We're going to be totally dependent on God. You might as well get totally dependent, dependent on him now. That way you're used to running with the Lord, used to being that warrior. 
delivered from drugs and alcohol and anything else. Letting go of all the sinful things in our lives now. So when Jesus breaks those seals on that scroll and starts pouring out his furious wrath, we're ready. We are those warriors. Nothing holding us back, free in Christ, that we can just take off and run for him, clear these cities, get to that safe place that he has waiting for us. And watch the destruction of this earth and all those who embrace the evil. Hear that last trump. Hear the shout of the mighty angel and see our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ coming on those clouds. Let's prepare now. We're at the end of days. This is it, y'all. Either we get ready now or you won't be able to stand in the last day. I Are you with the top rock in the in the cave? Say that. I call dibs on the top rock in the cave. Oh, okay. You want the upper bunk in the cave? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Praise God. <laughs> praise God. Yep. It's going to be different, yo. Things are going to change in our lives during this tribulation. The cities aren't going to be safe for God's children. Heck, they're going to be hunting for people who ain't got the mark full reward. Amen? And the lawlessness looks what's happening in the cities already. Oh, you're thinking it's going to get better. No. <laughs> well, uh, They've what, defunded Rev? the yeah. police. It's going to get worse. Oh, yeah. And, and you know what, Rev? Hmm. If you didn't think you were popular, you know, as time goes on, when tribulations hit, we all going to become very popular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We might not have been popular in high school. I'm telling you, not a girl in that school knew I went there. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they didn't know I existed. We had homeroom together. Oh, really? I never noticed you. I know. <laughs> I was waving at you, trying to get your attention, hoping I could take you to prom. You didn't even know I existed. <laughs> Amen. Watch this. The three distortions of Christianity. Number one is Judaized, Judaized Christianity. Then comes legalized Christianity. Then comes lawless Christianity. It was going on back then and continues today. Let me read this. Almost from the beginning. There were forces at work within Christianity that would have destroyed or sidetracked the movement. Of these, three created many problems then and have continued to reappear in other forms even today. The three aberrations are contrasted to true Christianity. Now, at the end of this, I'm going to give you true Christianity from this word. Amen? So the first one, they're called Judaized Christianity. This is what Paul was fighting again. Amen? And brought out so brilliantly in this book of Galatians. Make sure we don't fall back into this. Amen? Christians are Jews. This is their definition of a Christian in Judaized Christianity. Christians who are who. I'm sorry, Christians are Jews who have recognized Jesus, the promised Savior. Therefore, any Gentile desiring to become a Christian must first become Jew. Well, we know that's a lie. Amen? Now, their genuine concern was having a high regard for the Scriptures and God's choice of Jews as his people. They did not want to see God's commands overlooked or broken. So that Pharisee spirit, just as strict and nasty as they can be with this law of Moses. Now here's the danger, okay, of their belief. It tends to add human tradition and human standards to God's law. Also subtracts from the scriptures God's clear concern 
for all nations. Now, here's an application question. Amen? Just something to chew on with your sandwich, like a pickle on the side or some chips with that dip. Do you appreciate God's choice of a unique people through whom he offered forgiveness and eternal life to all peoples? Yes, would be my answer. Amen? God chose Israel to be his chosen people and his very unique people and his chosen nation. They rejected him, however. Are you with me? And at their rejection of their Messiah, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the door was open to the Gentiles. They don't want it. You want it? Come on in. The water's warm. And that's how we got in. We were supposed to come in through the Jewish nation. You see? Because God's will was, I will be their God. They will be my people. I will walk amongst my people. There will be a priest in every home in Israel. And the world will come to Israel and find me. It didn't amen. matter. And I, what amen. door and you I knocked on? I got a question on? about that. Hold, yeah. Hold on. I, I got a question about that. Did they ever even consider that that's what God wanted for them, to be the priests of the world so that they could teach people like us who God is and, and have us come to know him as our father and our savior and our provider. They took this stand like this, Tim, unfortunately. We're God's chosen people. You're not nanny, nanny, nanny. Nah. Oh, no, I get that. You're get a heathen. That. You're a dog. You're uh-huh. worthless scum. You're a woman. You're a child. We hate you. We're mm-hmm. God chosen people but yet they didn't love God they didn't obey God they rebelled against God every opportunity that they were given they worshiped false gods Amen. they intermarried where they were told not to everything that God asked them not to they made sure it was on their honey do list every morning they woke up And when they would be captured, God would punish them. And they would get taken away as slaves to another nation. And this is in the promised land. This is the most amazing thing. He brings them out of slavery in Egypt, through that wilderness, into the promised land, where they become slaves again. In the promised land. You're not supposed to be a slave anymore. It's the land of milk and honey. But due to their disobedience, their constant rebellion against God. He would allow them to go into captivity. Babylon ripped them a new one. Okay? You want to keep disobeying? He sent messengers, his prophets. They told him, we don't want to do this, y'all. Come on. Let's get this thing right with God. Come, repent. Repent, oh, ye Israel. Repent. Come back to God. Or surely a doom will come upon all of us. They were racing toward the doom. Kill the prophet. Shut him up. We don't want to hear from God. <laughs> okay. Well, and that's what exactly, Rev. And that's what I'm getting at. You know, it, you know, if they had done what the Lord had wanted them to do, you know, people would have been like, "You need to get healed or come to know the Creator, our Father." Right. Go to right. Israel. Go to Israel. They got. Mm-hmm. Hey, them guys are. Spirit filled. They know everything about God. That God's been talking to them since the beginning. The you one know? true God Amen. of all the universe lives in Israel with his people. Go to Israel. You'll find Amen. God. Well, Amen. what? where do I go in Israel? Kind of a big place. Knock on any door. It doesn't matter. Just go to Israel. Hit any door. They'll lead you to God. <laughs> Amen. That Amen. was God's will. Through Israel, the world would come to know God. That was his will, and that happened. In spite of their rebellion, it started in Israel with the apostles, the Holy Spirit moving power. You feel me? And it spread, and it spread, and it spread all around this world. The cross, 
the good news of Christ, the blood, the power of the Holy Ghost. It spread, y'all. But it was now at Israel's rejection. <laughs> you knock on them doors in Israel today, you ain't going to find God. You might find a bullet in your chest. <laughs> you know, they still hate everybody. They hated everybody back then. They still hate today. They still tell you today, we're God's chosen nation. <laughs> okay. We know that. But where's the God in your life? Because we know God now, too. And we love everyone, even you. Well, we don't love you, you Christians. <laughs> They'll spit on Christians in Israel today, the rabbi. Isn't that shameful? To today, they haven't gotten it. My goodness. So let's get to legalized Christianity. Amen? So in answer to your question, Tim, did they know? Yes, they knew. The prophets told them. God told them. They knew it from the word. Abraham taught them. Abraham knew that through his descendants, the world would be blessed. They wanted to do it that way. We're going to do it our way. Man, man-made way. Forget God's way. God, we don't need you right now. Don't you have some other universe you can go build? Go away. Leave us alone. <laughs> and isn't that the attitude today in all our countries and society? Leave me alone. It's my life. I can do whatever I want. I don't believe in you. What are you doing? Leave me alone. Go away. Same attitude all over the world. It's demonic, y'all. Let's look at legalized Christianity. Now, their de definition of a Christian are Christians are those who live by a long list of don't. <laughs> God's favor is earned by good behavior. Now, their genuine concern in legalized Christianity, they, they recognize that real change brought about by God should lead to changes in behavior. Here's the danger of, of legalism. It tends to make God's love something to earn rather than to accept freely. It would reduce Christianity to a set of impossible rules and transform the good news into bad news. <laughs> now, application question. As important as change in action is, can you see that God may be desiring different changes in you than in others? Yes. What God did for me, he may not do for another. How many people get out of hell? But he uh, can light you on fire. Heather's on fire, Tim's wife. We wasn't there. It had nothing to do with this ministry. She's been known and loved and prayed for by this ministry for almost two years now. Amen. But she had to go off with the Lord and get it her way. He doesn't work in all of us the same. How he's revealed to Jahan, to Ladera, to Anna, to Jesse, to all of us, Jay Clark. It's not the same way he did with me or with Tim, the way Tim and I, we, he put us uh -huh. together, but we don't have the same walks. He didn't work the same way in our lives. Everyone's uniquely, wonderfully, beautifully made by God. And I don't have the gifts of Jay Clark or Scott Woodall or Tim. They don't have the gifts I got. None of us got the gifts Jan has or Anna has or Ladera or Miss Turner or Quiet Storm. Everybody's gifted different. It's when we come together that the gifts in the body of Christ edify the whole body of Christ yeah. with Christ as the head. 
So naturally, Amen. the way he brings you in, the way he ministers to you in your heart, it's going to be different than the way he ministers to her or to him or to them or to those. You see? Now, this last one is called lawless Christianity. <laughs> this is kind of a new one for me. You mean there's no law to govern our lives and our walk in faith with Christ? Let's see what they say. They say... Christians live above the law. Oh, so there is law, but it doesn't apply to them, the lawless Christian. They need no guidelines. Ooh. God's word is not as important as our personal sense of God's guidance. Ooh, Ooh that sounds like Flip Wilson. The devil made me do it. Uh -huh. I'm not sick accepting responsibility for my sin. Here's their genuine concern in lawless Christianity. They recognize that forgiveness from God cannot be based on our ability to live up to his perfect standard. It must be received by faith as a gift made possible by Christ's death on the cross. Now here's the danger in this. It forgets that Christians are still human and fail consistently when trying to live only by what they feel God wants. In other words, I could walk into a bank and rob them and declare, God, I feel God wants me to do this. <laughs> right? Or come up on an accident where people need help, and I've got place to pull over, and I've got some medical training, and I could help, but I don't feel God wants me to do that. It's about a feeling instead of a relationship with Christ. Feel with the Holy Ghost, where the Holy Ghost will tell you, boy, don't you go in and rob no bank. God is your provider. Don't listen to that devil, right? God said, thou shalt not steal. Are you with me? Or, girl, now you got your medical bag right there in the back seat. Pull over, check those cars, make sure everybody's okay. Led by the Spirit, living by the Spirit, gifted by the Spirit. Not a feeling. Are you with me? So there's an application question behind this lawless Christianity, too. Do you recognize the ongoing need for God's express commands as you live out your gratitude for his great salvation? That's what I was touching on yesterday. We obey because it is the correct, grateful response for what Christ did on that cross. All that suffering he did for us. His precious blood spilled that we would be washed clean in his blood. The power of his blood. The power of his death. The power of his resurrection. That we're made right in God's sight by what Christ did on that cross. It's just a gift. Our grateful response is to live an obedient life to him. You see, not out of legalism, not out of <laughs> becoming Jewish, amen, not becoming anything. You don't have to become anything like a religion, you see, to be saved. Religion doesn't say, but Jesus does. And that personal relationship with him is what saves us. Are you with me? That intimate, loving, close, personal relationship. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. And he is real love boy, ain't he? And what he did for us on that cross, 
I mean, how can you not love him back? You see? And so here's true Christianity. Since we went through the Judaized Christianity, the legalized and the lawless Christianity, is true Christianity. Christians who are those who believe inwardly and outwardly that Christ's death has allowed God to offer them forgiveness and eternal life as a gift. <laughs> Can't be earned, y'all. It's a gift. They have accepted that gift through faith and are seeking to live a life of obedient gratitude for what God has done for them. Even the study guide agrees with me. So you know what we're preaching and teaching is Bible-based. It's from this word. It's a gracious heart on our part. Why we obey. Not because it's written not because the religion makes these demands on you. Uh-uh. There's a freedom in Christ. Outside of all the rules, regulations, bylaws that religions can bring, even the Jewish religion. And that's a bear coming under the law of Moses. Amen? So, our general concern in true Christianity Christianity is both private and public with heart belief and mouth confession. Our relationship to God and the power he provides result in obedience. Remember, we were reading, it's the Holy Spirit that leads us, teaches us to walk, delivers us from the demonic influences, delivers us from the selfishness, those selfish, sinful desires that we once had, amen, that we no longer have. That's the work of sanctification. God will help us walk this walk through the power. Oh, you act like the Holy Ghost ain't got no power. Through the power of the Spirit of Jesus, we read earlier in uh, Galatians 4. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. Having, this is still part of our general concern. Having received forgiveness and eternal life, we are now daily challenged to live that life with his help. God will help us walk the walk. All we got to do is surrender, y'all. Amen. The danger in true Christianity, is to avoid these other three distortions of Christianity. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And there's an application question. How would those closest to you describe your Christianity? Do they think you live so that God will accept you? Or do they know that you live because God has accepted you in Christ? Big difference. We don't have to live and earn anything from God. We've come to the realization in true Christianity that we can't earn anything from God. You can't earn salvation. You can't earn his love. You can't earn a favor. You can't earn a miracle. <laughs> you can't earn the filling of a need. There's nothing we can earn from our Father in heaven. He pours out his love on us because it's who he is. He blesses us because blesses us it's what he does. He even said, I'll pour out the rain <laughs> on the righteous and the wicked. He's even blessing the wicked, y'all. Praying that one day they would turn to him and realize every blessing they received came from above. But they're so full of pride and selfishness and evil. They won't acknowledge God. We read that over in Romans chapter 1, 18 through 32. 
the reprobate mind. They don't dare thank him. Huh. We thank him all day long. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Got a parking spot right up front? No, thank you, Jesus. Huh. Got a good meal in your belly? Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Got a call where somebody blessed you? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Got a check up in your mailbox you didn't even know it was coming? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Got a raise at work? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Woke up this morning in your right mind? Oh, thank you, Jesus. You could walk, you could talk. You had all your faculties? Oh, thank you, Jesus. We got so much we can thank him for. All day long. And I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. So we finished that chart. Let's cut it here. And we'll start in verse 21 tomorrow and finish up Galatians chapter 4. And then we get into my favorite. Chapter 5, the freedom in Christ. I keep telling y'all this freedom in Christ. Y'all act like you don't believe me. Amen. Amen. Put whatever thoughts you might have in the comments. We thank God for you. We lost him. He's driving. And he had just got loaded. So he's got seven hours, probably six, five and a half now left. And it must have hit a bad area. So uh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The anointing on this word. Thank you, Father, for this powerful, 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 life-saving, life-changing, life-rearranging word that you blessed us with today. Bury it in our heart <laughs> with like barbed wire that it may remain in our heart throughout eternity. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, amen. Father, some of these that you love and adore so much, and you drew him here today with purpose. They've been told they got a disease, a condition, a diagnosis, something wrong in their bodies. They're in pain, Lord. Something ain't working right. But you are our Jehovah Rapha. You are our healer. You don't practice medicine. You just heal. And some of these, Lord, have been told that this is now affecting this and this is now. They got multiple things going on all over their bodies. They're not free to run for you. They're not free to serve you. Some of them have been told, Lord, there's no cure. <laughs> and some of these, Father, the conditions, the diseases have such long names, you got to look them up just to figure out what it is that these doctors say they have, Lord. But we know one name, and there's only one name under heaven by which a man may be saved, and that's the name of Jesus. No greater name, Lord. And in the mighty name of Jesus, we speak it right now from the top of your heads to the soles of your feet in every area of your body, no matter how many things they say is wrong, all of it healed right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power upon your people. And, Father, some of these that you love and adore so much, and you drew them here today with purpose in bondage, Lord. Satan got a chain on them. Here's Pastor Tim. Amen. Must have hit a dead area. <laughs> yeah. We're praying for those in need of deliverance right now. Satan got them bound. They want to be free. They want to be free to serve Christ, to live for him his way. But they're in bondage to alcohol or drugs or this drug or that drug or this drug or that drug. They got so much going on out there. It could be sexual, it could be pornography, it could be gambling. They're not free. Satan got them bound. But watch this. The Lord wants you free. It's his will. You be free. You have fought so hard for your freedom, but you can't. 
get free. Oh, you're going to be free now. We speak it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every yoke broken in Jesus' name. Every stronghold torn down in Jesus' name. Every chain ripped off right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. You are now free. No withdrawals. No monkey on your back. No regrets in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Free to live this word. Become this word. Free to serve him with nothing holding you back ever again in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Thank you, Lord. And some of these, Father, that you love and adore so much and you drew them here today with purpose. Prisoners. But not necessarily in a facility. Prisoners in their emotions, their hearts, their spirits, their minds, they've been told. They got PTSD, anxiety, depression, all kind of things, Lord. They've been told there's no cure. They've been told they got multiple disorders. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You said in your word, it's the anointing that opens up those prison doors and sets every captive free. And we declare it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Depression gone right now in Jesus' name. PTSD gone right now in Jesus' name. ADHD gone right now in Jesus' name. Anxiety gone right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Schizophrenia gone right now in Jesus' name. Paranoia gone right now in Jesus' name. Bipolar, tripolar, quadpolar, however many they got, all of that gone right now in Jesus' name. Multiple personality disorder gone right now in Jesus' name. I don't know any more names, y'all. If they gave you any other names, and even if they told you you got multiple things going on, all of it gone right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name, and you are now free. Amen. Thank you, too. I want to say more. I add, too, that there's nothing made, nothing, uh, nothing created, by mm -hmm. man, not by name, not by hands, not by signs, not nothing that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can't heal you up. So whatever them doctors come up with, whatever they tell you you have, Jesus can heal that. Jesus can yeah. take it away. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we stole it from Coach Gecker. What God can't fix doesn't exist. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Receive your hand. Know it in your heart. This miracle work and power of God is yours. You're his children. You're his heirs. You got this. And he wants you to have this. It's yours. Amen? And Lord Jesus, speaking of you, Lord, <laughs> I feel you pushing on my shoulder, and I can feel your heat coming right down the side of my face, Lord. You want me to lean in. You're leaning in on them. Go ahead, Lord. Some of them that you love and adore so much. And you drew them here today with purpose are in a very dark place in their life. And they don't want to come out. They went in on purpose. They're sick of being hurt. They're tired of the pain. They don't want to be hurt no more, Lord. But you love and adore them. You know their names. You know exactly where that dark place is. Oh, Lord, have your way. Go to each and every one of them. You're the light of the world that men would not stumble. You are that bright morning star. You're the glory of God that lit this entire earth. On the first day when God said, let there be light days before you created the sun, moon, and stars. Oh, Lord, go to each of them. Light that dark place up with you. It ain't dark no more. Lend down that nail-pierced hand, Lord. Help them to their feet and into your loving and caring and all-powerful arms, your life-saving arms. Oh, just hug them and hold them, embrace them. Squeeze them tight, Lord. Let them know, I got you, John. Walk them out of that place into a new life lit up by you, Lord Jesus. And the church said together, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hey, Tim. Amen.
You ain't Come doing on. nothing but driving. You want to drive us home. <laughs> ah, sure. Will, can you do Come us on. all a favor? Yeah. Have a great day. Yeah. Have a glorious day. Yeah. Have a marvelous and loving, miraculous and graceful, and if you allow him, let him put him put his arms around you, day. Yeah. In our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, unless you've already made other plans. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.